Scarecrow and Mrs. King will not be shown tonight, so we may bring you the following holiday special. Hi, I'm Zach Childs, and welcome to the holiday recap and viewer favorites episode of the True Tone Lounge. You know, it's been an amazing year for us, and we just want to thank you, the viewers, by showing some of your favorite moments from the show and also answering some of your questions. I want to thank the viewers for all the wonderful cards and letters that they send in. This one comes from Little Danny Strain in Sylvan Park, Tennessee, and he wrote, Zach, who played the killer slide guitar part that's at the intro of every episode of the True Tone Lounge? Well, Danny, that was Al Perkins, guest number one on the True Tone Lounge. And we're not only gonna show a clip of him playing, but we're gonna show a viewer favorite clip of him talking about his work on Exile on Main Street with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Enjoy. So, so Mick has a handheld microphone yes. in the studio, and he's, he's kind of dancing around he's dan you. Doing his dance routine around, you know. And of course, the, I think there's probably some loose boards in that floor, you know. Too. So it was uh, he was doing his thing. He just wanted me to feel like I was right there with him on stage. So uh, I guess it came out okay, but uh, it was uh, it, it was it was traumatic there for, for a while. He said he said now the key said now you can stretch out on this all you want to. And, I thought to myself, I am stretching out on this. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, there's nothing like a frothy beverage and uh, curling up by the True Tone radio and hearing some fine music like this clip with Derek Wells, the 2016 ACM Guitarist of the Year. You know, we got a number of comments about Jeff Sin and his episode. In it, he played a new guitar that he had developed called the Model One. Viewers were wondering about the guitar, and I just wanted to make them aware that there's now a, uh, a more economical version of the instrument that's available through Jeff Sin and Eastwood Guitars. Here's a clip of Jeff playing the Model One. Thank you. 
what a great sounding and looking instrument. Thanks, appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, been a fun journey. A number of years ago, I met a guitarist at a Jeff Sin show here at Douglas Corner in Nashville. Uh, he was very nice, easy to talk to, and it wasn't until after the fact that I found out that he was one of the most in-demand guitar players in Nashville, and his name is Rob McNally. Roll the clip. sponsor. This holiday season, we have gifts for the musician in your life. From the makers of the visual volume, we introduce the Jekyll and Hyde Overdrive and Distortion. Scary good tones. Think of True Tone when you think of quality. Visit us on the World Wide Web at TrueTone.com. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. A number of viewers have asked, Zach, what was your favorite episode? Now that's a difficult question because it's kind of like asking, what's your favorite child? But I would have to say that my favorite episode is one with John Leventhal. John Leventhal is one of my favorite guitar players of all time. I've bought records that he has produced or played on for over 20 years. And it's not just that he's a great player, he plays the right part at the right time. And here is a clip of him talking about the difference between just being a guitarist and being a musician, and also a clip of John playing. But it was the stance that I, from an early stage, I loved guitar and I wanted to be a guitar player, but I also was thinking about everything else at the same time. Like a lot of guitar players, I suspect, get very hung up in the guitar, or bass player, or drummer, right? And they get hung up and sort of focused on their shit and their instrument. But from a very early thing, probably because I wanted to write songs too, I was focused on the guitar as part of a musical ensemble. So the thrust was, how do you be musical? How do you make the whole thing work? How do you create feeling? How do you make the thing surge? How do you make the thing pull back? I was always interested in the whole thing from an early age.
You know, we don't normally have political guests on the True Tone Lounge. But earlier this year, we had the great Pat Buchanan on. And here he is showing what he does best. J.D. Simo, uh, besides being a fantastic guitar player, is a uh, close and dear friend of mine. And it was a real privilege to get to interview him. And he was actually one of the most popular episodes of the True Tone Lounge. Many people have written in asking about the amplifier that he used in the episode and if it was the one that was stolen recently. Yes, it was. His 1967 Blackface Deluxe Reverb that he used in, in our video was stolen a matter of weeks after we filmed while he was in Rome, Italy. So here's a clip of him playing the amp. And if you're in Italy and you find a 1967 Deluxe Reverb amp with a Vintage 30 Celestian speaker in it, drop us a line. You know, Christmas is all about spending time with friends. And whenever I call you friend, I think about our True Tone Lounge interview with Kenny Loggins guitarist, Scott Bernard. 
Here's a clip where he shows us how to properly play the chorus to the mega hit Footloose. Roll the clip. So one of the things that's that's interesting and in that you uh, you know you're working with Kenny Loggins and anyone that's working with an artist that's had a lot of big hits that that cover bands in in mm -hmm. the playing. Right. I always find it interesting to ask the guitar player about how. Uh, how cover you know covers of these famous songs are are butchered or or played, <laughs> well, or, or played, nice word. You know, or played improperly. Right. So what would be a Kenny Loggins tune that you hear covered that really gets butchered a lot? I bet you most of them probably, but like yeah. the one that stands out really, really in my mind always is the Footloose because okay, most people don't realize that the the <clears throat> the courses the 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 bass and the guitar are doing this unison run and it's mapped out really it's not like a, just a boogie woogie thing you know I, I hear some players just playing uh, um, just for that's yeah. what I hear some guys doing during yeah. the course and that's not it at all okay. although Kenny kind of does that you know what he's just playing a little rhythm and he Stuff like that, right? Okay, so it's a really the it's a it's a specific part. Here you go. Come on, man, do it. No? Foot loops? Yeah, thanks. Sure. Joy to the... Joy to the... You know, Christmas makes me think about music, and music makes me think about Chet Atkins and our interview with Pat Bergeson. Pat Bergeson, uh, who's a fantastic guitar player, also had the privilege of working with Chet, and in one of our True Tone Lounge episodes, he talked about the fact that Chet had purchased a rat pedal and was using it. So we're going to show a little bit of that, and we're also going to have a clip of Pat playing. Enjoy. Roll the clip. Chet had such a, a, a clean, you know, style of playing. Did did he? practice a lot? Did, I mean, Yeah, he did. He did practice a lot. He practiced every day as far as I knew. I mean, he's always playing the guitar. You know, he'd sit up at night and stay up late and play guitar, you know, yeah. just like, like a lot of us do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was, is, and one of the things, other things that I learned from him was how uh, I met him. I was probably 31 years old and he was so into the guitar at his age, at age 65 or something when I met him. And, you know, I just found that to be very inspiring. You know, here's a guy who could go golfing every day and just collect money, you know, and be Chet Atkins, and that's not what he was about. You know, he was always looking for new young talent and always had his ear to the ground and always checking out the new guy and wanting to steal licks from him. And, you know, he was way into it. And how much was he into uh, tone and gear? Uh... He, I think he was way, yeah, he was very much into tone and gear, but I think it was mostly, like, his his sound was, um, he mostly used a clean sound. Mm -hmm. um, but he did after, uh, you know, when I started working from, for, when I started working for him, he got all the same paddles I had because <laughs> he wanted to, like, <laughs> sound like a rock guy, you know, so I thought that was cool. What, so yeah. what, what kind of pedals were these that you were using that oh, Chet went out and bought? Well, I was using, I, I used a Rat Distortion uh -huh. and a Boss Compressor. I think it was the compressor first, the, the green one with the four knobs, okay. and then a, a Rat Distortion, and then I had a Boss Delay and a, you know, uh, like a Boss Tremolo, and, yeah. and that's pretty, you know, 
basically that was the setup, yeah. you know, but so he went out and got all the same pedals. I had yeah. the boss pedal board. And, That's pretty interesting yeah. to think of Chet, you know, playing through a rat pedal. Yeah. yeah. If you live in Nashville, Tennessee and you need your amp worked on, you take it to Todd Sharp. But what most people don't know about Todd is that he's worked with everyone from Rod Stewart to Eric Clapton and Hall and & Oates. He's one of the finest guitar players in town. He also has recently introduced his own line of amplifiers. And here in our next clip, he demonstrates the Jack of All Tone 20 amplifiers. This is my Dorado, and I got to tune down a whole step, and it's got some, it's got some big funky tone. So let's hear some of that.
<sighs> you know, Tom Hemby is a fantastic guy. I met him years ago at the NAMM show, and he kept us in stitches. But here he is in a clip of doing what he does best. Well, that ends our show, and I just want to thank you for all the cards and letters and comments, and keep them rolling in. And again, Merry Christmas from all the guys at True Tone. I'm gonna get drunk here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah.